July. I'd like to welcome everybody back. It's good to see everybody. House will come to order. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that we adjourn the current legislative day. Uh, we have a communication. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please read in the communication. Mr. Speaker, House Committee report for June 22nd, 2020 from House Administration. House Bill 350, two favorable, three on its merits. Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 243, five on its merits. Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 229, five on its merits. Senate Bill 236, five on its merits. And Senate Bill 191, five on its merits. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of the committee report. I move that we adjourn the current legislative day. Stand adjourned. <clears throat> House will come to order. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Mr. Baumbach. Present. Mr. Baumbach, present. Ms. Bennett. Present. Ms. Bennett, present. Mr. Bentz. Present. Mr. Bentz, present. Ms. Bolden. Present. Ms. Bolden, present. Mr. Brady. Present. Mr. Brady, present. Mrs. Briggs King. Present. Mrs. Briggs King, present. Mr. Bush. Present. Mr. Bush, present. Mr. Carson. Present. Person present, Mr. Chipocha. Present. Mr. Chipocha present, Mr. Collins. Present. Mr. Collins present, Mr. Cook. Present. Mr. Cook present, Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Present. Mrs. Dorsey Walker present, Mr. Dukes. Present. Mr. Dukes present, Mr. Gray. Present. Mr. Gray present, Mrs. Griffith. Present. Mrs. Griffith present, Mrs. Heffernan. Present. Mrs. Heffernan present, Mr. Hensley. Present. Mr. Hensley present, Mr. Jakes. Present. Mr. Jakes present, Mrs. Johnson. Present. Mrs. Johnson, present. Mr. Q. Johnson. Present. Mr. Q. Johnson, present. Mr. Kowalko. Present. Mr. Kowalko, present. Mrs. Longhurst. Present. Mrs. Longhurst, present. Mr. Lynn. Present. Mr. Lynn, present. Mr. Matthews. Present. Mr. Matthews, present. Mrs. Minor Brown. Present. Mrs. Minor Brown, present. Mr. Mitchell. Present. Mr. Mitchell, present. Mr. Morris. Present. Mr. Morris, present. Mr. Osinski. Present. Mr. Osinski, present. Mr. Postles. Present. Mr. Postal's present. Mr. Ramon. Present. Mr. Ramon, present. Mr. Siegfried. Present. Mr. Siegfried, present. Mr. Short. Present. Mr. Short, present. Mr. Shoup. Present. Mr. Shoup, present. Mr. Smith. Present. Mr. Smith, present. Mr. Smick. Present. Mr. Smick, present. Mr. Spiegelman. Present. Mr. Spiegelman, present. Mr. Vanderwin. Present. Mr. Vanderwin, present. Mr. Viola. Present. Mr. Viola, present. Mrs. Williams. Present. Mrs. Williams, present. Mr. Yerrick. Present. Mr. Yerrick, present. Mr. Speaker. Present. Mr. Speaker, present. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 41 yes. Present. House of Representatives is formally in session. Each member's identity has been authenticated by the presiding officer. The prayer for today will be offered by Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Most gracious and loving God, we come to you in humble submission. God, we ask that you touch our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits as we do your work, your will, and your way. Heavenly Father, those who are suffering as a result of COVID-19 who've lost loved ones, we ask that you keep them in your loving arms. And Father, we just ask that you keep us and continue to have us do your work, your will, and your way. In God's name we shall pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to have a moment of silence for Gail Hawker Truitt, which is the sister of Senator Gerald Hawker. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes of the previous legis legislative day have been posted and without objection will be accepted as posted. Representative Longhurst. I have a hand up by Representative Spiegelman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can we please have a moment of silence for Mrs. Chris Noonan? Um, she is the wife co-owner of Harvest Ridge Winery. 
She passed over the weekend. Um, very sad. The funeral is going to be um, on Monday up in Pennsylvania. She was a wonderful woman. Very, very hospitable. To everybody who came to the winery, she would be very, very greatly missed. Could you state her name again, please? I didn't quite get it. Chris Noonan. Noonan. Moment of silence for Chris Noonan. Thank you. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to yield to Representative Brady to strike a bill. Representative Brady. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At the request of the sponsor, I'd like to strike House Bill 303. House Bill 303 is hereby stricken. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the rules be suspended, which interfere with the action of consent agenda G. Do I have a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded that rules be suspended for action on House consent agenda G, consisting of House Bill 352, House Bill 354, House Bill 355, Senate Bill 223, Senate Bill 227, and Senate Bill 237. Mr. Clerk, please read in consent agenda G by number only. Mr. Speaker, consent agenda G, consisting of House Bill 352, House Bill 354, House Bill 355, Senate Bill 223, no. Senate Bill 227, and Senate Bill 237. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of consent agenda G, motion to suspend rules. Mr. Chief Clerk, please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules for action on consent agenda G. Mr. Bombeck. Yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Baumbach, yes. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz? Yes. Mr. Bentz, yes. Ms. Bolden? Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King? No. Mrs. Briggs King, no. Mr. Bush? Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chicocha? Yes. Mr. Chicocha, yes. Mr. Collins? No. Mr. Collins, no. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker? Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes? Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray? Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith? Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan? Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley? Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko? Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst? Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown? Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris? No. Mr. Morris, no. Mr. Osinski? Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles? No. Mr. Postles, no. Mr. Ramon? Yes. Mr. Ramon? Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried? Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short? Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick? No. Mr. Smick, no. Mr. Spiegelman? Yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin? Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola? Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yerrick? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Yerrick, yes. Mr. Speaker? Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 36 yes, 5 no. I received the <coughs> requirement of votes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, consent agenda uh, G consists of seven pieces of legislation House Bill 352, sponsored by Representative Ozinski, an act to amend the Title 29 of the Delaware Code relating to the powers of the Delaware Secretary of Labor related to unemployment compensation in response to the COVID 19 pandemic. House Bill 354, sponsored by Representative Bennett, an act to amend Title 16 of the Delaware Code relating to death certificates. House Bill 355, sponsored by Representative Kendra Johnson, 
an act to amend Title 29 of the Delaware Code relating to the Department of Health and Social Services, Senate Bill 223, 223 sponsored by Representative Ozinski, an act to amend Title 21 of the Delaware Code relating to disqualification from driving a commercial motor vehicle, Senate Bill 227, sponsored by Representative Ozinski, an act to amend Title 21 of the Delaware Code relating to commercial learning permits, and finally, Senate Bill 237, sponsored by Re Representative Siegfried, an act to amend Title 31 of the Delaware Code relating to dental care for adult Medicaid recipients. If there aren't any questions, roll call, please. Ms. Clark, please call the roll on House Consent Agenda G, consisting of House Bill 352, House Bill 354, House Bill 355, Senate Bill 227, Senate Bill 237. Mr. Bombeck. Yes. Mr. Bombeck, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chicocha. Yes. Mr. Chicocha, yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins, yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown. Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris. Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski. Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postals. Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon. Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried. Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short. Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup. Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Spiegelman. Voting yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin. Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola. Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yarrick. Yes. Mr. Yarrick, yes. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 41 yes. You're muted, Pete. What happens when you have three people controlling? Having received Constitution Majority House Consent Agenda G, consisting of House Bill 352, 354, 355, Senate Bill 223, Senate Bill 227, and Senate Bill 237, declare pass the House. Senator Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd like to go to Representative Quinn Johnson to uh, motion to suspend rules on Senate Joint Resolution Number Two. Representative Johnson, I'm going to need a motion to suspend rules. Yes, sir, I'd like to make a motion to spend any and all rules that would interfere with the uh, taking action on Senate Joint Resolution 2, which is, amends the 2020 revenue estimates. Second. Moved and seconded. Rules be suspended for action on Senate Joint Resolution Number 2. Mr. Chief Clerk, please read in by title only. Mr. Speaker, Senate Joint Resolution Number 2, sponsored by Senator McDowell and Representative Quinn Johnson and Senators Ennis, Hardy, Sturgeon, Lawson, and Richardson, Richardson, and Representatives Bolden, Carson, Jakes, Briggs, King, and Hensley. The Senate Joint Resolution Number 2, the official general fund revenue estimate for fiscal year 2020. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of Senate Joint Resolution Number 2 by title only. Mr. Clerk. Then the question, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules for action on Senate Joint Resolution Number Two. 
Baumbach. Yes. Mr. Baumbach, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chikocha. Yes. Mr. Chikocha, yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins, yes. yes. Mr. Cook. Mr. Collins, yes. Mr. Cook. Mr. Yes. Cook, yeah. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown. Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris. Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski. Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles. Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon. Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried. Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short. Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup. Mr. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick? Yes. Mr. Smick, yes. Mr. Spiegelman? Putting yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin? Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola? Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yarrick? Yes. Mr. Yarrick, yes. Mr. Speaker? Yes. yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll uh, roll call on the motion, 41 yes. I proceed to report the rules are suspended for Senate Joint Resolution number two. I have uh, Mr. Collins, Mr. Collins, Mr. I'm not sure whether you want to talk before Representative. I would like to make a quick comment. You're breaking up pretty bad, but that's not what I want to comment on. I just want to state that I voted yes on that motion to suspend, and I will also do so on SJR3 coming up because I have been opposed to this virtual session, but we do this every year, so I feel I can do it. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Rich. Representative Johnson, Senate Thank Joint you. Resolution number two is now before us. Thank you. As stated in the uh, beginning statement, this is where we actually amend what the final revenue um, will be for the 2020 budget that we're currently in, which will end on June 30th. So procedurally, we're required to make that formal. So unless there's any questions, roll call. Don't see any questions, Mr. Clerk. Please call the roll on Senate Joint Resolution 2. Mr. Baumbach. Yes. Mr. Baumbach, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Mr. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chikocha. Yes. Mr. Chikocha, yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins, yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown. Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris. Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski. Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles. Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon. Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried. Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short. Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup. Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick. Yes. Mr. Smick, yes. Mr. Spiegelman. Voting yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin. Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola. Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams. 
Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yarrick? Yes. Mr. Yarrick, yes. Mr. Speaker? Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 41 yes. I received Constitution majority and a joint resolution number two. It's declared passed. Thank you, Mr. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to defer to Representative Quinn Johnson again for a motion to suspend rules on Senate joint resolution number three. Representative Johnson, I'm going to need a motion to suspend rules on Senate Joint Resolution Number Three. Hey, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to make a motion that we suspend any and all rules that would interfere with our action on Senate Joint Resolution Number Three. This is the same as Senate Joint Resolution Two, except for the fact that it is referencing the revenue estimates for the upcoming fiscal year of 2021. Second. Moved and seconded, rules be suspended for action on Senate Joint Resolution Number Three. Mr. Chief Clerk, please read in by title only. Mr. Speaker, so Senate Joint Resolution Number Three, sponsored by Senator McDowell and Representative Q. Johnson and Senators Ennis, Party, Sturgeon, Lawson, and Richardson, and Representatives Holden, Carson, Jakes, Briggs, King, and Hensley, the official general fund revenue estimate for fiscal year 2021. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of Senate Joint Resolution Number Three by title only. Mr. Clark, please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules for action on Senate Joint Resolution Number Three. Mr. Bombeck. Yes. Mr. Bombeck, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chicocha. Yes. Mr. Chikocha, yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins, yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown. Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris. Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski. Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles. Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon. Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried. Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short. Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup. Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick. Yes. Mr. Smick, yes. Mr. Spiegelman. Voting, yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin. Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola. Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yarrick. Yes. Mr. Yarrick, yes. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 41 yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As stated, Senate Joint Resolution is a procedural uh, requirement that we must establish as a body what the revenue uh, shall be for us to be able to produce a balanced budget, uh, which will be the next item we will deal with. This information is provided us from our DFAC committee. And if there are no questions, I ask for a roll call. And no questions, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll on Senate Joint Resolution Number 3. Mr. Bombeck. Yes. Mr. Bombeck, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chikocha. Yes. Mr. Chikocha, yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins, yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. 
Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown? Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski? Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles? Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon? Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried? Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short? Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick? Yes. Mr. Smick, yes. Mr. Spiegelman? Putting yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin? Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola? Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yerrick? Yes. Mr. Yerrick, yes. Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 41 yes. Mr. Majority Senate Joint Resolution Number Three is declared passed. By the House. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I defer to Representative Quinn Johnson again for House Bill 240 or Senate Bill 240. I apologize. Representative Johnson, I'm going to need a motion to suspend rules on Senate Bill two, Number 240. Oops. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to make a motion that we suspend any and all rules that would interfere with action taken on Senate Bill 240, which is the state's budget bill. Second. And moved and seconded that rules be suspended for action on Senate Bill 240. Mr. Clerk, please read it in by title only. Mr. Speaker, Senate Bill number 240, sponsored, sponsored by Senator McDowell and Representative Q. Johnson and Senators Ennis, Pardee, Sturgeon, Lawson, and Richardson, and Representatives Bolden, Carson, Jakes, Briggs King and Hensley. An act making appropriations for the expense of the state of the state government for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021, specifying certain procedures, conditions, and limitations for the expenditure of such funds, and amending certain pertinent statutory provisions. Mr. Speaker, this reads the concludes the reading of Senate Bill 240 by title of Chief Clerk, please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules for action on Senate Bill 240. Mr. Bombeck. Yes. Bombeck, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Bentz. Yes. Mr. Bentz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Br Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. Mr. Bush, yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chipocha. Yes. Mr. Chipocha, yes. Mr. Collins. No. Mr. Collins, no. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker. Yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, yes. Mr. Dukes. Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. Mr. Yes. Gray. Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith. Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan. Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley. Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko. Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst. Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews. Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown. Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris. Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski. Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles. Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon. Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried. Yes. Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short. Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup. Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick. Yes. Mr. Smick, yes. Mr. Spiegelman. Putting yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin. Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola. Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yarrick. Yes. Mr. Yarrick, yes. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call on the motion 40 yes, one no. I received the required number of votes. Rules are suspended for Senate Bill number 240, which is now before us. I do have. Um, Representative Ruth Briggs King has her hand up, but I think it's for the comment on the budget itself. I'm going to go to Representative Johnson. Uh, Senate Bill 240 is now before us, but before I go to you, I have to go to Representative Kowalko for a pre filed amendment, House Bill 240. Representative Kowalko, would you like to have House Amendment number one to Senate Bill 240 read in? Yes, I would, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Clark, please read in House Amendment number one by title only. 
Mr. Speaker, House Amendment Number 1 to Senate Bill 240, sponsored by Representative Kowalka. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of House Amendment 1 to Senate Bill 240 by title only. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Kowalka. Floor yes. Is yours. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, uh, House Amendment uh, 1 to Senate Bill 240 uh, is, uh, in Yogi Berra's words, would be uh, uh, deja vu all over again. Uh, some of the words have changed uh, in, in referring to this part of the epilogue language, but the uh, intention and the result still remain the same. And uh, so I filed this, uh, this amendment, and it removes the ability of a charter school to request the difference between the amount of state transportation funding allocation and actual expenditures to be used for educational purposes allowed under the state opportunity fund. The couple key points that I want, uh, I want to make here why I've done this. Number one, I think in first and foremost is the fact that it's about the 10th consecutive budget that we've done this where uh, we have decided to disregard the actual law, which is in Delaware Code, Title 14, Section 508, that requires uh, charter schools uh, to return extra money for the transportation money allocation that they do not use. There's similar legislation that uh, dictates the same for traditional schools to return the excess money. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to uh, express here, not make, is that uh, in, this, in this iteration of the epilogue language insertion, it says that the uh, uh, charter school uh, may request the Secretary of Education, Director of Office of Management, Budget Control General, that savings that they have over and above, uh, what they've used actually for transportation, uh, be, uh, be allowable uh, to return under the state opportunity fund. We already fund the state opportunity fund. And I would absolutely be supportive if we changed our code, our existing code, and we said that any excess money that it does is not used for transportation money out of the transportation fund becomes available to the general fund and specifically placed in the opportunity fund. This does not do that. This allows the charter school that has, uh, has saved money to apply to, to recover that money. I just want to give you an example from 2017, 2018. It, it, Odyssey Charter received uh, 1.58 billion, pardon me while I put on my glasses. 1.58 million allocated for tra uh, transportation. They spent, actual spent, 796,000 and they kept $764,000. The total that year kept a uh, surplus money that was kept by charter schools. It was $1.4 million, $1,418,707. Uh, we are in a situation now that we are struggling to, uh, to make men's meet. We've done a very good job, and, and I applaud uh, uh, Representative Johnson and the entire Joint Finance Committee for, for the work they've done and, and for the governor's input into this to make our money stretch out far. But the intention of an allocation is of paramount importance to us and should be of paramount importance to us as legislators. When we allocate money for a specific reason, it's not that we put a bag of, of cash on the table and say, have at it. I know that's an extreme metaphor and it's not applicable here, but we do have a situation that has been put us in, I, I think, a, a, a situation where we are not being responsible to the taxpaying public. We are not being responsible to, uh, to the laws that we have passed. And, and again, I will go on a bill that would change that language that's in, existing in the code now to, to make sure that any money over and above transportation allocation goes into a specific educational purpose, but not available at the request of a charter school. But the way this is written, Odyssey Charter can, uh, if they have a, 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 I don't think they'll have that much, maybe they will, a three quarters of a million dollar surplus, they, they can apply for it and, and dip into it. And that money is not going to be available for everyone else in that state opportunity fund as the state opportunity fund was intended to do. So once again, I am asking that we consider removing that language from the, uh, from the uh, budget bill that epilogue language and uh, it's it's been a long time that we've done this and maybe we've gotten into a habit of acceptance but it does not make it in my mind does not make it any more proper 
for us to do that. Uh, I think that the taxpayers deserve a certain amount of ac accountability, but they also deserve a, a significant dedication that when we allocate funds for a purpose, any, any purpose, even things that we don't agree on uh, as, as a body, but we do pass them and we allocate those. I think that that purpose of that should be used specifically for whenever the allocation was met. That's all I had to say, Mr. Speaker. If there's no questions, I'd ask for a roll call. No, I have a response. All right, wait, hang on, uh, Representative Johnson. Let me go to Representative Bombach. You probably can respond to both of them. Representative Bombach. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Kowalko. Uh, I believe that last year the stance I took was um, is actually very similar to my stance this year. I completely agree with Representative Kowalko uh, that I think that uh, changing what is in the title for uh, public education the same way year after year after year for 10 years is the role of the Education Committee to bring to the chamber, not to the Joint Finance Committee. Uh, blog language should be used, and I think it's used extremely effectively this year by the JFC uh, to solve financial matters uh, one time and maybe even two or three times. But once it gets to be a decade, then I think that it is saying very clearly that the overall the permanent law should be changed. Um, I asked that those who supported that change to bring it forward this year. Obviously, this is an unusual year, um, and therefore for, uh, I do plan to vote against the amendment this year. But if those who support this change do not bring a bill to us next year, it does not pass, um, then I will uh, be voting for this amendment in all future years. Uh, we should not be making public school policy in the budget bill uh, in epilogue paragraphs. Um, so I thank Representative Kowalko for his persistent um, attention to this, this issue. Uh, and I, I, although I wanna um, echo Representative Kowalko's um, appreciation for the hard work that the Joint Finance Committee did, especially this year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Kowalko. Thank you, Representative Quinn Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I deem this as an unfriendly amendment and I ask that all of my colleagues do not support this amendment for these reasons. Number one, people who attend Delaware State Charter Schools are taxpayers. In addition, language within the bill treats every single school equally, charter schools and what we define as traditionally public schools. There is a formula that is has been created that provides funding for transportation. That formula is already set where you could determine what a school or district is going to receive for transportation. What occurs is that every district, all 19 districts, as well as the charter schools, are able on their own merits to go to busing contractors and then further negotiate that rate, saving every single taxpayer in the state, not just people that attend traditional charter schools or those that attend uh, uh, traditional public schools or those that attend charter schools, every taxpayer. And what has been found is that through these savings in the past, those funds were being utilized to go towards these students exactly what the education money is intended to do. And what we have done through this language is that we have made sure that every school throughout the entire state is being treated equitably, that every student in the state has the same opportunities, and that there is an incentive for the districts and the schools to negotiate their busing contracts. And therefore this language allows and requires two things. One, the funds must go back and be held by the Department of Education. If and only if that school or school district determines that there is additional educational needs within their school, they then can apply for that additional savings to be returned to them to go towards very specific educational supportive programs that benefit the students. Taxpayer money for taxpayer benefit. If we did not do this, you would see 
that there was no incentive for any busing contract to be negotiated. And whatever the formula was, is what we would be spending on busing. Instead, we've created a great opportunity for economies of scale to be happening and children to benefit. If there is a desire to change the law, neither one of the people that were talking about this introduced a bill in the beginning of January. COVID-19 had nothing to do with the bill not being presented. The budget is law. It supersedes everything. It is a benefit. That's why I do not feel that it's it, something that we should do by treating a certain sector of students that have decided to go to charter schools differently than those students that go to traditional public schools. And for that reason, again, I support the language in the bill. I do not support this amendment and ask my colleagues to please vote it down. Thank you. Representative Kowalko? Uh, yes, thank Your you. Your pleasure. Yes, uh, first I wanna respond. Okay. Uh, neither of the individuals. She's on the bill. Representative Baumbach, Representative Baumbach or myself, neither of the individuals had an obligation or, or even entertained an obligation to introduce a bill to change the existing code. As a matter of fact, I was told and assured that this epilogue language would not appear in this bill again this year. But to say that I have an obligation to change the law when in fact the JFC has changed the law, has contravened existing law for, for the purpose of this is, uh, is quite frankly a, a shifting of the, uh, of the onus uh, unfairly uh, onto, onto me or, or any of the people that agree with what I'm saying. Another thing uh, I've heard before, and I've had this, I've actually had this uh, discussion in front of the Joint Finance Committee when uh, uh, Representative Smith was the chair, and that is the argument, which I consider made out of whole cloth that if we did not allow these charter schools, and they are public schools, if we did not allow them to recover the money, they would not negotiate the best deal. This gives them an incentive to negotiate the best deal. Well, I'm going to tell you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if we have public funded entities that are not working for the best deal on behalf of the taxpayer, then I think that that public entity should be shut down. And I'm not talking about any of these particular charter schools, but that is, that is not a legitimate argument to say this, would take, this is the only thing that presents an incentive to these schools to save money or, or not, that the fact that they would get it back themselves for their own use. I stand by what I'm saying, and that is that we make an allocation, and it's for a specific purpose. And the taxpayers depend on us to say that here's the purpose it's intended for, and that's where it will be spent. And to say a, a comparison that this is treatment, equal treatment, no, right now, traditional schools are required to return excess money, so are charter schools. Traditional schools work on about $580 per student, and they are never have excess funds. In fact, they have to take it out of the local referendum money to supplement it. Charter schools are by formula given uh, Newcastle County somewhere around the range of $895 per student compared to the $575 for additional school students. So it almost stands a reason that there will be an excess, but it's not necessarily guaranteed. When you look at the things in the, through the prism of responsibility to the taxpayer, I believe that's paramount. So without any further questions, I uh, request some roll call on I see no further questions. Uh, would you like a roll call? Please. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll in House Amendment number one to Senate Bill number 240. Mr. Baumbach. No. Mr. Baumbach, no. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. No. Mr. Benz, no. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. No. Mr. Brady, no. Mrs. Briggs King. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. No. Mr. Bush, no. Mr. Carson. No. Mr. Carson, no. Mr. Chicocha. No. Mr. Chicocha, no. Mr. Collins. No. Mr. Collins, no. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook? No. 
Mr. Cook, no. Mrs. Dorsey Walker? No. Mrs. Dorsey Walker, no. Mr. Dukes? No. Mr. Dukes, no. Mr. Gray? No. Mr. Gray, no. Mrs. Griffith? No. Mrs. Griffith, no. Mrs. Heffernan? No. Mrs. Heffernan, no. Mr. Hensley? No. Mr. Hensley, no. Mr. Jakes? No. Mr. Jakes, no. Mrs. Johnson? No. Mrs. Johnson, no. Mr. Q. Johnson? No. Mr. Q. Johnson, no. Mr. Kowalko? Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst? No. Mrs. Longhurst, no. Mr. Lynn? No. Mr. Lynn, no. Mr. Matthews? No. Mr. Matthews, no. Mrs. Minor Brown? Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell? No. Mr. Mitchell, no. Mr. Morris? No. Mr. Morris, no. Mr. Osinski? No. Mr. Osinski, no. Mr. Postles? No. Mr. Postles, no. Mr. Ramon? No. Mr. Ramon, no. Mr. Siegfried? No. Mr. Siegfried, no. Mr. Short? No. Mr. Short, no. Mr. Shoup? No. Mr. Shoup, no. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Smith, no. Mr. Smick? No. Mr. Smick, no. Mr. Spiegelman? Putting no. Mr. Spiegelman, no. Mr. Vanderwin? No. Mr. Vanderwin, no. Mr. Viola? No. Mr. Viola, no. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Yerk? No. Mr. Yerk, no. Uh, yes. Excuse me. Mr. Yerk, no. Mr. Speaker? No. Mr. Speaker, no. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals six yes, 35 no. For six, sufficient number of votes, House Member number one, the House Bill, or to Senate Bill number 240 has failed in the House. Representative Johnson. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Now before us is the Budget Bill, Senate Bill number 240. First, I would like to thank my fellow members of the Joint Finance Committee, Representative Bill Carson, Representative Earl Jakes, Representative Stephanie T. Bolden, Representative Kevin Hensley, and Representative Ruth Briggs King. I also want to thank the tremendous work that our Controller General Mike Morton and his great, great staff have done during this process and working with our OMB Director Mike Jackson and his tremendous staff. There have been significant long hours and a lot of hard work by these individuals that often gets recognized because their work is done, sadly, behind the scenes. Without them, there's no doubt that we would not be able to do our jobs as a joint finance committee. We started this process in February with our hearings with high hopes of being able to move forward with a number of very important initiatives that would have greatly helped the citizens of Delaware. Those hopes were quickly wiped away when we encountered the first global pandemic the world has experienced in over 100 years. As a result of the devastating economic impact the virus has had on our economy, Delaware lost over $531 million in revenue to fund the remaining 2020 budget and the proposed 2021 budget that is laid out in this bill before you. However, it was recent DFAC revenue projections that improved and helped us get to the finish line. Prior to this most recent DFAC meeting, the staff in both offices, Mike Morton, Mike Jackson's, as well as myself and my fellow co-chair, Senator Harris Dow, had to work diligently to try to figure out a path forward that was $150 million worse in solutions than what you see in the bill before you. Again, I can't thank the staff enough to have to go through that exercise only to be told thank you. It was not necessary. But despite these challenges, we are obligated and do have a balanced budget that is before you. This budget is going to appropriate $4,547,001.70. It represents an increase of 95.1 million or 2.1% over the fiscal year 2020 budget. And this increase is only due to what we call door openers, expenditures that we must do every single year. However, it holds every other department spending at the fiscal year 2020 spending levels. In doing so, they we were successful in making sure that no programs or services were reduced or cut, a tremendous accomplishment in this environment. Some of the door openers we had to deal with, many of you had conversations and understand that prior to uh, our most recent DFAC meeting, with having much more uh, a much larger decrease in revenue, we had to 
look at the path of not providing the collective bargaining and step increases. As a result of the change in the June defect numbers, we were able to exercise the trigger that we had created and we are appropriating $21.8 million to fund the collective bargaining and step increases. In kindergarten through 12, we have 27.1 million to fund enrollment growth, which for the upcoming year is showing an additional 272.5 unit count increase. Eight and a half million to fund additional routes and formula updates for public school transportation. 2.8 million for unique alternative programs to fund the costs of private placement in health and social services. 4.8 million to annualize the fiscal 20 funding for 75 community placements and to fund 75 additional community placements in related day clinical and other services for six months into the fiscal year 2021. 1.1 million to analyze fiscal year 20 funding for 151 special school graduates, funding for additional 121 special school graduates. 2.4 million for birth to three program to reflect caseload growth. 2.8 million for projected growth in the Delaware Healthy Children's Program in our kids department. 2.6 million for projected growth in child welfare programs for foster care placement and adoption. 3 million for prevention and behavioral health program for growth in crisis intervention and stabiliza stabilizations for children mental health. In elections, with the upcoming election process, we have 3.7 million that was needed for primary and general election costs. We were, as a result of the DFAC number change in June, add 13.1 million back into the budget stabilization fund, which will leave it at a 50% level prior to what it was uh, for this year. We were actually able to be able to send 35 million in cash to the bond bill for them to be able to take action and do things that are not bondable, which you will hear about when the bond bill is presented to us. We were able to add 1 million for paramedic formula increases. And we were able to avoid 7.9 million in what we call forced reversions where there would have been internal agency cuts to various different programs. While this was a very challenging year and there remains a great deal of uncertainty to the short-term economic future of our country, Delaware is in a much better position when compared to other states. As you look across the headlines in the papers and across the news, you see many states and local jurisdictions struggling with having to cut positions and cut services. The reason that Delaware is in this position is due to the budget process that we have been using. The budget process consists of utilizing the budget growth benchmark as a guide for ongoing spending appropriations, using half of what we define as one-time revenues for one-time projects, and continually adding to the budget stabilization fund with the other half of those one-time revenues. As a result of our actions, we have yet again been able to secure the AAA bond rating that Delaware is so proud of, which in turn saves taxpayers significant amounts of debt funding costs. We're able to pass a balanced budget with zero increased taxes, zero state employees being furloughed, zero pay cuts, zero increased cost of benefits, and most importantly, zero decreased services provided to the citizens of Delaware. Make no mistake, the road ahead is still going to be challenging. There could not have been a, any greater challenge in, though that we could have faced that proved that the discipline of our budget process works. Each and every single one of you of the General Assembly should be proud of the work that you have done as part of this process and making sure that we follow it now and into the future. I again thank each and every one of you. I am saddened by this challenge that we've been faced with, but we have persevered. We have done our number one duty. We have a balanced budget before you. We are going to continue to serve and provide the services that the taxpayers of Delaware depend upon. And again, I can't thank the committee and all the individuals that are part of the budget process enough for their hard work. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad to answer any questions. If not, roll call. I think uh, Representative uh, Briggs King would like to speak.
Thank you. Yes, I would. I just want to, first of all, thank our co-chairman, Quinn Johnson, for an excellent job um, on, on a somewhat unusual circumstances for our committee. Uh, certainly meeting to do the budget remotely um, is very different in many different aspects. I think though it was the times like this when we rely on what we have done and how we have done it. And one of the things that became so apparent was the work of our many agencies to go back after such a good report in February and basically have to redo a budget in a short period of time. And to do that and look at ways and meaningful ways that they could make cuts and reductions while keeping the very things that were so important during a critical time for the public that was both um, financially responsible, but also very responsive to the needs that we certainly have faced in our communities in Delaware. And so for that, I'm very grateful. I'm also very grateful that a few years ago, um, we went ahead and we started that smoothing fund, a sustainability fund, because it was very important in helping balance the budget um, for 2021 and clearly being able to put money, continue to put money in that account um, and keeping on that, even though times were difficult, um, that structure that this is important and this is inherent in what we're going to do and how we do it. So with that, I'm, I'm very happy to have been part of the budget process this year. Thank my co-workers uh, on that committee for the yeoman job that they did behind the scenes in many cases and, and hope that all of you agree and will support the budget this year. Thank you, Representative Briggs King. Uh, Representative Rich Collins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, I want to compliment the budget committee. I think they are doing their best. And I think Delaware has proven by our AAA bond rating in many ways is doing an excellent job. However, I will be voting no on this budget because once you take education out of the picture, the vast majority of that money goes to the executive branch. When this pandemic started, I certainly supported some of the actions taken by the executive branch. But as time has passed on and as it has gotten dramatically less serious, we still find that many, many of our constitutional rights and many aspects of state code have been set aside by, in essentially, the authority of one person. And I am not going to vote to continue to empower that when there is absolutely no indication of when it ever might end. And so uh, I'll just simply say I will be voting no, and that is the reason. Thank, Thank you. you. Representative Johnson, would you like a roll call? Yes, please. Ms. Clerk, please call the roll on Senate Bill number 240. Mr. Bombeck. Yes. Mr. Bombeck, yes. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Bennett, yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Mr. Benz, yes. Ms. Bolden. Yes. Ms. Bolden, yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Brady, yes. Mrs. Briggs King. Yes. Mrs. Briggs King, yes. Mr. Bush. Mr. Bush. Representative Bush. Mr. Bush, absent. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Carson, yes. Mr. Chikocha? Yes. Mr. Chikocha, yes. Mr. Collins? No. Mr. Collins, no. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Cook, yes. Mrs. Dorsey Walker? Mrs. Dorsey Walker? Mrs. Dorsey Walker, absent. Mr. Dukes? Yes. Mr. Dukes, yes. yes. Mr. Gray? Yes. Mr. Gray, yes. Mrs. Griffith? Yes. Mrs. Griffith, yes. Mrs. Heffernan? Yes. Mrs. Heffernan, yes. Mr. Hensley? Yes. Mr. Hensley, yes. Mr. Jakes? Mr. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Jakes, yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Johnson, yes. Mr. Q. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Q. Johnson, yes. Mr. Kowalko? Yes. Mr. Kowalko, yes. Mrs. Longhurst? Yes. Mrs. Longhurst, yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Lynn, yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Mr. Matthews, yes. Mrs. Minor Brown? Yes. Mrs. Minor Brown, yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Mitchell, yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Morris, yes. Mr. Osinski? Yes. Mr. Osinski, yes. Mr. Postles? Yes. Mr. Postles, yes. Mr. Ramon? Yes. Mr. Ramon, yes. Mr. Siegfried? Yes. 
Mr. Siegfried, yes. Mr. Short? Yes. Mr. Short, yes. Mr. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Shoup, yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith, yes. Mr. Smick? Yes. Mr. Smick, yes. Mr. Spiegelman? Voting yes. Mr. Spiegelman, yes. Mr. Vanderwin? Yes. Mr. Vanderwin, yes. Mr. Viola? Yes. Mr. Viola, yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Williams, yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Mr. Garrett, yes. Mr. Speaker? Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Yes. Mr. Bush from absent to voting yes. Yes. This is Dorsey Walker from absent to voting yes. Mr. Speaker, the roll call reveals 40 yes, one no. I have received a petition majority Senate Bill number 240 to declare pass the House. I have a couple of people that would like to speak. Representative Molden. Representative Bolden. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. I had I just wanted to comment on the uh, on the budget uh, prior to us voting. I wanted to to uh, compliment our chair and vice chairs, especially Quinn. I know this was a difficult time, and I know we had uh, a lot of concerns about, uh, especially for our nonprofits and going forward. We received so many emails, but the main thing was. Uh, concern I had was what was getting the steps back to the unions and, and to the teachers, which we were able to do, and also getting money into bond, which we were able to do. Uh, and going forward, uh, he has been a gentle giant, I'll, I'll say, because I know there's been a lot of uh, uh, problems and disagreements and questions that I had. Uh, and I wanted to thank the staff wholeheartedly for everything that they've done, because I've been calling them late at night, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> opinions on different uh, items. So Quinn, uh, thank you very, very much for everything. Thank all the members of, of the uh, Joint Finance as well. I appreciate having to have the opportunity to work with you this year and look forward uh, to us again. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to uh, make my little statement. I'm getting kind of confused here because <laughs> with, with the air conditioner on and off and then trying to listen to you guys. So I'm making a few mistakes, but my heart is there, so thank you. Yes, your heart is. Uh, I just want to say uh, the, the Joint Finance Committee, you've done a, a really great job under the most trying of circumstances. Uh, you've tried to keep us informed the best way you could. Quinn, uh, you held this group together and you brought us the, the information that we needed um, to get through this. It's been the worst of years, and uh, actually it's actually worse than when 2009 hit with all the money. Uh, that disappeared. Uh, 500, over $500 million deficit. You guys handled it very quickly, uh, very efficiently, without opposition from almost everyone on this, this uh, Zoom session right now. I can't thank you enough, Quinn, for what you've done. I can't thank the rest of the committee for supporting Quinn uh, and working together and coming back to our caucuses and passing it on to our caucuses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We now have a blueprint. We went into this thing with, without any kind of knowledge about where to go and how to do it. Um, and, you know, obviously some, some mistakes may have been made along the way, but they were corrected and they moved forward. And if we ever get in this situation again, we now have a little bit of a blueprint on how to do it. So thank you guys very much. I have uh, Representative Kim Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I too would like to thank uh, uh, Representative Johnson for his leadership and the rest of the committee. I know it was challenging times, but I felt confident with all them leading us uh, through this financial crisis. So thank you so much. Representative Longhurst. Up, oh, Representative Quinn Johnson. No, I just wanted to thank everyone for the kind comments. It definitely was a trying and challenging time for every single one of us. Um, again, the words are appreciated and to the team. Thank you all very, very much. And to the members of the Controller General staff and OMB that are listening, we love you all very much too, because granted you are what helped us get here. Totally agree with you, Quinn. The Mike and Mike show downstairs and their staff uh, are the glue that holds everybody th everybody else together. So I thank them as well. Um, seeing no other questions, Representative Longhurst. You're muted. There you go. I would also like to make a few comments. Um, there you go. I always feel that leadership, um, a great leader is somebody who doesn't take credit for achievements that happen. And 
just listening to Representative Johnson go on about the budget and thanking all the people who were a big part of it um, to make it to this st stage with so much um, going on around us. Um, it takes a great leader to lead and it takes a great leader to recognize other people and not take credit for what we have accomplished. Um, but I, for one, wanna say that I think you are a tremendous leader and did an amazing job down in, um, in JFC. And I think you have brought to our caucus a lot of information, kept us updated, never asked for any accolades whatsoever, just did your job and led the group um, to, to this budget. So uh, I think a lot of recognition goes to you and your leadership. So um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart of what you did this year. I know it was difficult, so thank you. Mr. Speaker, are there any communications? Yes, there are. Mr. Clark, please read the communications. Uh, Mr. Speaker, communication from the Senate dated June 23rd, 2020. The Senate wishes to inform the House that it has passed Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 239, Senate Bill 240, Senate Bill 246, Senate Bill 247, Senate Bill 249, Senate Bill 248, Senate Bill 251, Senate Bill 244, Senate Bill 245, Senate Bill 253, and Senate Bill 210, and Senate Joint Resolution Number 2 and 3, and requests the concurrence of the House. And the Senate has passed House Bill Number 342, House Bill 343, House Bill 344, House Bill 345, House Bill 347, House Bill 341, House Bill 232, House Bill 237, House Bill 229 with House Amendment 1, House Bill 2, excuse me, 318 with House Amendment 1, and House Bill 349 with House Amendment 1, and is returning the same to the House. Mr. Speaker, this concludes the reading of the Senate communication. Thank you, Mr. Chief Clerk. Representative Longhurst. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If there isn't anything else, I move that we recess the call of the chair. The House will stand in recess until 12 noon on Thursday, June 25th, 2020.